Why you should be collecting Franklin half dollars. Let's discuss that. Hi everyone, GD here. I'm glad you could all join me today. Well, maybe mo some of you may have noticed it's been a long time since I did an intro video. I didn't like the original one that I had, so I decided to play around with some special effects this weekend, and um, I would love to hear what you folks think about what I did. Should I nix it or should I keep it? Okay, let's discuss the Franklin half dollar. This is a coin that collectors should really be concentrating on. And I will tell you why here. First of all, let's discuss the coin a little bit. The one I just showed you there was a Proof 67 Cameo. This one here is a Business Strike. It is a uh, MS64 Full Bell Lines. The uh, Franklin Half, I think some people might consider it to be a uh, poor stepchild in coin collecting. I don't. I think it's got a lot of promise here. Um, most people that collect half dollars from the 20th century obviously are going to go for the Walking Liberty Half. Those that are into stacking, the one to go for is the 1964 Kennedy, obviously, because it's going to have generally less wear than any of the others. But the Franklin half falling in between the two. And when you think about it, if it hadn't been for President Kennedy being assassinated and being honored on the Kennedy half dollar, um, we might still have the Franklin half dollar today. The Kennedy is still being produced, and the Franklin might have continued to be produced. But this coin was produced by John R. Sinnock. He was the designer of the coin. And the model he used for the front of this here was uh, from the original bust that was created by Houdon, who was a famous sculptor who lived during the time of Franklin and created that bust from life when Franklin was the ambassador of France. I must admit, the back of this coin, the reverse of this coin with this little eagle that's over here does not impress me at all, but that was a law where the eagle had to be on there and he fitted it in there. And of course, the Liberty Bell was the main feature of the reverse of these coins. This particular one, as I had mentioned, is full bell lines um, and quite often because of the strike of these and that's what uh, determines how well a coin is struck on both sides is by the design that's on both of them and how much metal has to be uh, formed for each side generally the full bell lines do not show up which are these lines there are other lines in here but the ones that tend to be um, missing or down here along the bottom or they are not complete this particular one was struck well enough that it does have the full bell lines these coins here um, weighed and I'm having a problem here with my stands today so we'll just leave those like that um, these coins here weighed 12.5 grams and they were 90% silver and 10% copper um, they had a pure silver weight of 0 0.36169 ounces. They're 30.6 millimeters in diameter, and they have a reeded edge on them. I doubt very much that can show up in the capsule here. And these were minted in all three different mints. I love this particular coin here, Proof 67 Cameo. The proofs are absolutely my favorite in this series here. And speaking of that, there are only 14 years that the proofs were created. Now, there is actually 15 different proofs because the 1961, there was a rare double die um, in that year. So there is a 61 proof and a 61 double die. But they were only produced during 14 years. Now, for the business strikes, um, this type right here, 
Um, these were produced for 16 years. They were produced starting in 1948 and ran till 1963. Um, the proofs, by the way, they started producing those in 1950 and they ran till 1963 and all of those were produced in Philadelphia. Now, one of the things that I love about the Franklin half is it is an underappreciated coin, which means right now the pricing on them is probably pretty good as compared to other series and might be well worth somebody putting a collection together of these. And the amazing thing was, on the business strikes, there were, for the entire run from um, 1948 all the way up to 1963, there were 465,815,455 business strikes created. Now compare that to the 1964 Kennedy half dollars, where they produced 429,509,450 of them. So the 1964 Kennedy half dollar alone had almost as many produced minted as the entire run of these business strike Franklin half dollars. Now with the proofs, there was um, 15,886,955 of these produced. So these are going to be a little bit more costly, and there are a few dates in there, especially in the earlier ones that are going to get a little bit pricey if you get into the upper grades. Um, But it is very possible to put together a full collection of these for the average collector. And that's what I love about the most. I mean, this one here has beautiful, a beautiful cartwheel going on. I know my lights aren't the best, so I don't know if that's showing up. It's a nice frosted field on it, and it shows the cartwheel up really nice. These are both beautiful coins. Again, the only drawback that I see on this coin is that little eagle there. It would have been nice if it was a better designed eagle, but um, everything about this coin is one that is desirable. And I do believe everybody should be adding at least some of these to their collection. They're also great for stacking because we do see a lot of these that wind up in, uh, had been in circulation and do show some wear. So finding these at your local coin shop uh, probably in is going to allow you to get them pretty similar to a circulated Kennedy from that time period. Uh, And most of these are going to have more weight to them because they got less circulation than we would see on the Standing Liberties. So Kennedys would be my number one. 64 Kennedys would be my number one stacking type silver followed by these as stacking silver. And as far as building a collection, Um, this is what I think would be a perfect area for somebody to concentrate on. Well, I hope you folks liked what I produced here today, and um, I'd love to hear what you folks think about my new intro there, whether I should keep it or get rid of it. Okay, folks, I hope you're all doing well. As I said, over the summer months, I'm just going to be doing sporadic videos, so I don't know when the next one will be, but... um, Maybe sometime this week, depending upon what the weather's like. Okay, I hope you're all doing well out there. And I hope you're finding great things to add to not only your stack, but your coin collection. Okay, and until next time, stay safe, keep stacking, and have a great day. This is GD saying goodbye.